All right, everyone, we're back and we're doing another NS panel panel video. So I've been using this thing a fair bit, testing it out in different situations, and I thought it was about time we had a look inside and see what it's actually made of. So, first things first, if we pop this little cover off. There we go, the back unclips like that, and you can see we've got eight little pins there. I've already taken the screws out for this bit. Let me have a look inside. We can see what it's made of. So, it is a pretty straightforward circuit. It looks like we've got two voltage regulators here, which are 6211As. I don't know that one off the top of my head, but I'm gonna assume it's very similar to a AMS 1117. We have those pins that go through to the top, and you can see there's BZ, whatever that means, and then there's RY1, 2, and 3, which we'll say is relays. We then have five volts on ground, which is pretty handy. Over here, we have these I.O. pins that we're going to use to flash this thing eventually. The guts of it are under this, obviously. Um, up here is a connection to the HMI panel, which is a TFT display. And you can see it's connected by this little ribbon, ribbon connector here. Now, inside that display, there's essentially two chips. You can see there, there is a chip here, which is essentially what receives the connection. And then there is the chip that actually powers the display, it looks like there, and I'm not too sure what that one is off the top of my head. EA2121, Google says, something to do with a washing machine, so wrong top results. Now, you can see here as well that there is um, some pads, so that's the TFRX and TX, so if you're ever having troubles flashing the display, because it does take its own firmware that you have to, or its own HMI file that you create using the Nexteon display editor, you can always put serial on there and flash it directly. And I'm guessing that's the reset. I don't know what those other two pins are. And it's going to use the common ground. Now, if we take this out, actually, disconnect the display first. That's probably the smart move, isn't it? Ignore my NAS in the background. That's having a bit of a whinge. Oh, there's some really terrible tweezers. There we go. That's the back of the display there. And you can probably even find the model from that, but I will post a link to the model below from memory. It's got something like a 4 meg flash, or the HMI file can be up to about 4 meg. And then I think this thing itself actually has 16 meg from memory. I'd have to have a look, and I'll put more info uh, below in the description. But you can see the other side is pretty straightforward. We have the button for each of the relays. We have the reset button, and then we have a little uh, temperature probe. So... It doesn't have a microphone and it doesn't have humidity sensor like I thought in my last video. That being said, I don't think it'd be hard to add it. Um, there's probably going to be some IOs that you can tap. I mean, you could probably even repurpose the RX and TX and IO0 because they will be available to the firmware, I reckon. Um, you just have to be aware that it might make it hard to flash in the future and they might be strapping pins. You'd want to have to have, to have a read because these are espressive based. So they are essentially an ESP32. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know the exact details, but I will put the details in the comments when I have a look later. I know because I've tinkered with this a fair bit and it is quite a powerful little MCU. I quite like it. I will flash it with an alternate firmware at some point and that will be the third video in this series. But you can see here, I do have the US version. You've got the board details on the back there. And we're also going to have a look at this relay. So, so there's well, the power supply for it, I should just say. It looks like it's just going to pop out in a board's direction. Might need a little bit of effort. Where's my spudger? All right, it took a little bit, but I think I figured out how to get it out. So if you put a little bit of flex on this, you can just kind of pop it forward. You don't want to flex it and bend it too much because it will possibly permanently deform me. See, there's just starting to come out, pops back in. Oh, I have actually bent that a bit, haven't I? All right. Well, that's a later me problem. For now, I'm more interested in looking at what's inside this. Jeez, it is tight though, isn't it? All right, there we go. Only slightly bent. That's all right. Straighten it back out, and once it's attached to the wall, it's not going to be a problem. Now we have this, which looks like it's just press fit. Yep. Alright, that's out. 
and we have an interesting little circuit here. Uh, let's get these screws out and have a closer look. Alright, that should be all the screws that allows us to remove it, and there we go. So, pretty basic but good little design. Uh, if we have a look here, judging from the back, that's the in and that's the out. On the inside we have a little bridge rectifier there. That is an AB58, pretty straightforward. It uh, looks like there we have our safety capacitor and fusible resistor. So that's going to be a fusible resistor under there, I'd say. That's the safety capacitor that looks like it is in a class Y arrangement. And we then have a pretty standard power supply there. Um, this, I'd say, is going to be the power supply controller chip. That is LP3669. Now, there is no real isolation between these. Uh, I feel like there should be some better isolation. But, you know, there probably is room. They could have actually cut the PCBs to create more isolation. And I'd say from this design as well, you don't want to play with the internals. Uh, it is going to be isolated there, but then there's no opto-coupling. They're a 5-volt golden relay, as you can see there. The GI1A5LH, so it's rated for 10 amps exactly. They didn't really give any wiggle room there by using a 12 amp or something. It's relayed only on the live, obviously. Um, I think in Australia, we might have to put a relay on live and neutral. I mean, it's not strictly necessary, but it definitely does have some benefits. It's not a bad little circuit. There is definitely room to improve. I don't know if it would be certified for use in Australia. Shush, Nass. Um, definitely does the job. But I think they could really improve that. I don't even like that that one relay is on the wonk. I guess that's how they had to fit it in, but it just seems messy. And all in all, this thing's pretty simple. I don't see why they're so expensive. I don't think their price is justified, but I haven't really seen anything else on the market quite like it. So if you have one, especially if you have another of the US ones and you've managed to flash it, that would be great. I have had some troubles flashing this, so I'm probably going to flash it directly using those pins next time. And there's a fair bit on the forums about that. But until next time, folks, stay safe. Don't do this sort of stuff whilst it's plugged into mains. Make sure you count your screws and know what goes where. Love the feedback. Leave a comment, thumbs up, uh, like and follow, whatever you want to do. This is a new channel. I'm going to keep putting content out, ideally about once a week. But if I don't get around to it, I don't get around to it. I also have a couple of businesses, like three businesses that I'm trying to run. So time is short and the beers are few and far between at the moment. But we're coming up to the holiday season. I will take some time off. And hopefully you enjoyed that. Catch you guys next time.